Uh, my husband, yes. can you please bring me a bowl of water? Let me wash my hands. This fish. My wife, have you not finished smoke this fish? Or when do you plan preparing food for us in the evening? Mola. Mola, don't worry. Soon, I'll be finished smoking the fish. And I'll prepare something for us all to eat before we go to sleep. As I am sure, the children must be very hungry as well. I just saw Joe going down the road. He was very, very angry. Do you remember when Joe decided to drop out of school? To make money to support his family because he thought schooling was a waste of time? Was I the fault? No. I sent him to school, but he refused going to school. If I were him, I would have been a pilot by now. The money that Joe brings to this house supports this family a lot. In fact, it goes a long way in helping this family. And me, I appreciate that. I appreciate that well. Woman, why don't you climb on top of the roof of this kitchen and shout so that the whole world will know that I am unable to take care of my family? And why do you bring this problem now? It's just that Joe came back today with a very worried look on his face. He said some students visited he and Bomboy by the beach and they were curious about their activities. And these students explained to them the effects their activities have on the mangroves. We are students from the university and we are carrying on a research. I'm called Susan, I read environmental science and this is my friend James, he reads both in the Okay guys, we just want to ask you some few questions. Do you realize you are cutting mango tree as fuel wood? Our customers prefer fuel wood from this type of trees. Mm -hmm. It burns also when it's wet and enable them to smoke their fish properly. Ah, uh -uh. of course. See, I really, I do read about this thing in books and I always imagine how it is like. Seeing it right now really makes me feel very bad because it is more than what I imagine. Listen, listen, listen. We do not intend to pray with you. It's, we simply want you to see the importance of the mango tree. The mango tree is important to life in water and life on earth. So, we want you to understand that the mango tree serves as a habitat for fish in the water and makes it possible for them to lay their eggs. So once we cut down this tree, we give them for sunlight energy to make it possible for the smaller plant species to grow bigger and this will disturb the fish from laying their eggs. So you can see how this will affect our environment. It, the mangrove also serves as a barrier between the terrestrial and the aquatic ecosystem. And its roots help to reduce the rate of soil erosion. Oh, 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 hold on for day. Now it's it be aquatic erosion. I don't know which kind of language don't know. Hey. James, I need money to put in my pocket, okay? Uh, I need to sell this for to make money for my family. Ah, calm down. We understand you need to make money. But what we are saying is that it is not bad to use environmental resources, but we should be able to use them in such a way that we preserve some for our generation and the future generation. That is what we are saying. Hope you understand. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. I wanted to work with Joe since he appeared unhappy. Uh, Joe, oh, no. 
I told your father about the experience you and Bomboy had done at the beach with those students. Joe told me too about it. I don't think about it. Hey, hey, well, the explanation sounds reasonable. You know, we use a lot of foil wood to smoke our fish. I remember when we just got married. There used to be a lot of fish down at the beach. Now, fishermen complain there isn't enough quantity. Mama, that means if nothing is done, by the time I get married, I'll find it difficult to provide fish for my children. Ah, Brenda. What? The problem is cutting down the mangoes to smoke fish. Mm. Uh -huh. And if I stop destroying the mango, the fish will be able to lay their eggs in the mango, maintain the fish population. Ah, so, and if we, we smoke our fish, you know, we have to use lesser fuel wood you know, to smoke our fish. Yes. Uh, Brenda, tomorrow you should find out about simple oh. oven and methods of smoking. That one will come for me. Good afternoon, Sam. Thanks, ma'am. My family sent me to you to find out other way to smoke our fish. Okay, there are, there are many options in the traditional fish smoking. Fish smoking and drying have been traditions that have taken place since the origin of man, especially smoking. We have been working on this, on, on this situation for the last 25, 25 26 years. But I, I think the art oven is going to bring some innovation in trying to make smoking more environmentally friendly. And then we have um, the solar drying, I'm putting in the solar panel so I can store energy, can dry at night, can dry during the rainy season. Solar drying is so interesting, you can dry anything. So it can, I think it's going to open up wonderful options for these women. Uh, smoking is limited, but drying can dry anything. So it's, it's a wonderful option, even for poor producing medicinal plants. You know, it's, it's going to be a wonderful uh, the evolution you know, in the post-harvest sector. Uh, and and the, the third option is that we are also encouraging the marketing of fresh fish. Marketing of fresh fish, for example, oh, uh, uh, it's a container, it's an ice box with an insulation. So these are some of the scenarios that we are trying to bring into, into the sector to make sure that I mean, we can make a, an impact on reducing deforestation or destruction of mangroves. A lot of devastation is happening with the mangrove community. They are cutting a lot of trees to do this smoking and to construct their makeshift shelters and their barns and things like that. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of destruction is going on that we really need to check. Getting to the mangroves is not really easy. Uh, it's quite, quite simple getting there by boat. And uh, this has been the main way that these people get in there on low tides, on high tides. And when they get in there, they chop off the trees and uh, get them into small junks and put them in their boats and then uh, take them back to their communities, uh, either for sale or for their own uh, uh, use. <laughs> Um, it is really glaringly there, clear that people, if you lose all of the, what you're using for your energy, you will no more have it. If the mangroves are very close to you and you are chopping them day in, day out, you'll be going for long distances to get more wood to do your smoking. So there again, you'll be creating more work on your own side. So if, if we don't check them off, if we lose the mangrove, we will not have our, 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 our wood for, for smoking our fish. Maybe we'll start looking for other means of smoking the fish or maybe going very far to get the mangroves that are far off your communities to smoke the fish, which is going to be more uh, time consuming and um, maybe expensive for you to get. So it's really going to weigh on the communities. Yeah, if they cut the mangrove, first of all, you know, uh, the mangroves are a very good water conservation species. And they are very useful in controlling floods and erosion. So if the mangroves are cut, they are going to provoke a lot of flooding in the area because there is no control mechanism anymore. Um, the aspect of their local climate is, is really something that is paramount. They might not really visualize or see the immediate uh, uh, problems or the impacts of what they are doing, but on the long run, it might be devastating. The fishermen report that during flooding periods, they have very little cash. It's very difficult because they cannot catch the fish, and um, this affects the economy. Of course, for an area uh, which is already impoverished and uh, they are who depend of, on fish. And if the fish is no longer there for them, it means uh, their economic life is also threatened. So on the other side, chopping off the mangrove, you are also helping to get other organisms to go extinct. Like birds who are nesting on the mangroves, they won't have a place to nest. So where will they nest? You're sending them off your locality. 
and they are going locally extinct in your area, you won't have them again. So that's one of the impact also when we're chopping the mangrove without checking. Okay, the, uh, the mangroves absorb carbon dioxide. They, secretary, uh, they absorb carbon dioxide and store in their system. And if these mangroves are cut, then that ability to absorb carbon dioxide is no longer there. Even if we, are, we don't really see much uh, of mangrove devastation in this area and we feel that it doesn't have an impact on climate change, it's a big lie. It has, it has some impact in the sense. And of course, mangrove being a good carbon sink, it means that that very important resource is removed and climate change is going to be accelerated. Yeah, uh, the smoking aspect too of uh, the fish, that's really true, burning a lot of carbon and sending them to the atmosphere. <laughs> you know what you're doing, you're contributing in putting a lot of carbon in the, in the atmosphere. And when that blanket is there, uh, you realize that uh, it's generating a lot of heat in your area. The cumulative effect is what, what we're talking about. Sometimes we, we say, oh, we don't contribute much to climate change, but over the long term, there is contribution, even at a local level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally those are some of the questions that people want to come and say, ah, if you don't want us to use the mangrove, what will we use? What do you want us to do? We are not in effect saying that they shouldn't use the mangroves but they should use it in a sustainable manner, in a wise manner. Most of them who are cutting, just pose a question, how many times or how many, how, how many trees have you even planted? How, or what, have you even attempted to plant a tree? It is easy planting it. You have all the, pro, uh, the, the, the seedlings of the mangroves that you can easily take and just put them in the soil and, and it germinates. Easy thing to do, you're not going to label yourself that much. But nobody takes the time to do that. So for them to understand that it is also their duty to replant whatever they are cutting would help them more. It's going to sustain what they are doing and it's going to sustain the ecology.